Welcome. Here's the question. Does 0.999 forever equal 1 or does it not? This is the age-old question that drives students and teachers simply nuts. It's a very interesting question and it's a valid one. It's ab you have absolutely every right to be confused by it. Uh, let's look about 0.99. Here it goes. 0.999 dot 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 forever. Is it 1 or is it not? Well, most students would argue this way. 0.9. That's certainly not 1. In fact, it's smaller than 1. What about 0.99? That too is smaller than 1. It's a bit closer, but it's smaller. What about 3 nines? 0.999. I'm afraid that's still less than 1. Even if I were to draw 50 nines, that would still be smaller than 1. In fact, it doesn't matter how many nines I draw, the answer is always smaller than 1. Therefore, a whole bunch of 0.99s going on forever would still have to be smaller than 1. It will never actually get to 1. Now, that's a very decent line of thought, and many people argue that way forever and a day, but I have a question about that. So let's just remove this moment. Uh, people, for some reason, don't seem to object to 0.3333 forever being one third. But my reasoning here is the same argument actually applies, the same problem. Look at this. If I was just to write 0.3, that would not be a third, that would be less than a third. Or 0.33 is certainly smaller than a third. 0.333 is smaller than a third. If I draw 53s after the decimal point, that is still a number smaller than a third. By the same reasoning, I have to say that this guy is smaller than a third. What's well, curious, folks, for some reason, do not object to saying 0.333 is a third, but they will object to saying 0.999 is one. Well, what's the difference? Why do people like this one and not like this one? Well, I have a feeling it's to do with long division. Let's go back a step. Let's, let's actually go back to one third and perform long division. Let's divide one by three. And here goes. We set up a long division symbol. We write one, probably a whole bunch of decimals. Here goes 1.000, again, dot, 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 forever. That's very curious. We wish to divide this by three. Well, here goes. How does long division work? How many times does 3 go into 1? Not at all, so don't try it. Bring that 1 over and make this 10. Ask how many times does 3 go into 10? Well, it certainly goes in it 3 times, leaving 1 over. Carry the 1. We're left with how many times does 3 go into 10? 3 times, with 1 over, carry the 1, and so on. So actually, if you perform the long division, you feel you're stuck in an infinite loop. So it seems reasonable to believe that we have staring before our face a true statement that 0.333 forever is a third. Well, I can actually argue exactly the same way to say that 0.999 forever is 1. It's a bit strange, but I'm going to do this following. Let's divide 1 by 1 using the long division algorithm, but I'm not going to be very efficient. Here's the number 1 with a whole bunch of zeros, and I'm dividing by 1. Now, of course, I'd say how many times does 1 go into 1 and be done with it, but I'd be a little bit sneaky. Let's say 1 doesn't go into that at all and has, still has a remainder of 1. That's very true. I'll carry the 1 and make 10 and ask myself, how many times does 1 go into 10? Well, it certainly goes in 10 times, but also goes in 9 times with a remainder of 1. Let's carry the 1. Ask now, how many times does 1 go into 10? I'm going to be inefficient. It goes in 9 times with a remainder of 1. Ah, remainder of 1. Carry it. How many times does 9 go into 10? Will 1 go into 10? 9 times, and so on. So in some sense, long division even wants to suggest that 0.999 forever is 1. I admit it's very strange, inefficient long division, but there we are. Well, maybe long division is the way to go. I don't know how to argue it, really. So let's try a different tact. Most people do the following. If you're looking at an infinite decimal, like uh, here goes 0.333 forever, let's pretend we don't know what it is. And one trick is to give it a name. Let's call it Frederica, and perform algebra on the statement. Let's multiply both sides by 10. Well, uh, 0.333 times 10 would be 3.333 forever, would give me 10 Frederikas. Well, 3.333 forever, excuse me, would be 3 plus 0.333. It's another way of writing the left-hand side. That's still 10 Frederikas. Well, 3 plus, what's this guy? Oh, that's Frederika again, it is 10 Frederikas. So let's subtract Frederika from both sides. 3 equals, oops, 9 Frederikas gives me Frederica is three-ninths or one-third. There it is. Let's do the same argument. Let's look at 0.999 forever and perform whoops, the same sort of algebra on it. 0.9999 forever. Let's do the fun part. Give it a name. Let's call it Georges. All right, here's Georges. 
multiply the same algebra. Let's multiply both sides by 10. 9.99 forever would be 10 Georges. Well, what is 9.999? Well, it's really 9 plus my original guy. That's still 10 Georges. So I've got 9 plus Georges is 10 Georges. Ah, subtract Georges from both sides. 9 must be 9 Georges. And look at that. The math is telling me Georges must be 1. It seems that I've got an ironclad argument now. That point 9999, here it is, point 9999 has to be 1. Well, I have to say something. That is actually not very satisfying. Let me uh, blow this argument out of the water. Let's try it again. We did an infinite number of 9s to the right. What if I asked about a number that was an infinite number of 9s to the left? And ask what value is that? This is very strange. But let's apply exactly the same mathematics. Let's start by giving a name, Harriet. Let's multiply by 10. Multiplying a number by 10 just adds a 0 to the end. So the old infinite number of 9s with a 0 on the end would be 10 Harriots. Well, this guy, whoops, one more Harriet. 10 Harriots. Look at this guy. It's the original Harriet minus 9. This is really a whole bunch of 9s ending in a 9. Minus a 9 is 10 Harriots. That is, the original Harriet minus 9 is 10 Harriots. Subtract Harriet from both sides. Negative 9 is 9 Harriots, which tells me Harriet is negative 1. It looks like I've just proven the number, infinite number of 9s to the left, is negative 1. What do you think of that? Now, this is very curious. When I give this argument to folk, they usually balk at the idea of a whole bunch of 9s to the left being a nice negative number. And the reason they argue about this is the following. This guy is really 9, that's that guy, plus 90, that's that 9 there, plus 900. And it looks like the mathematics has just proven this equals negative 1. 9 plus 90 plus 900 plus 9000 plus 90,000 and so on as with negative 1. Nonsense. So what's going on? Well, this is where there's a human element to mathematics. All we've really done here, let me resolve the paradox at long last, is the following, is done the following. If we choose to believe that point 9999 has an answer, then the math we did shows the answer must be 1. The answer must be 1. If we choose to believe that a whole bunch of 9s going infinitely farther left has an answer, then the answer must be negative 1. That's all the mathematics has done. It's never addressed this question. Most people like to believe this guy does have an answer, in which case the answer is 1. The math says that. Most people choose to believe this guy doesn't have an answer, in which case it doesn't matter what the math says. You don't even believe it has an answer. This is very interesting. So, does 0.999 equal 1, or does it not? Well, the question is, do you believe it has an answer? If you think yes, then the answer is 1. Yes, it does equal 1. If you think no, and you have every right to believe no, then there is no answer to the question. So, well done, students. You're absolutely right to question it and balk at the idea. But uh, if you ever take a calculus class, you might have reason to believe to want it believe, to believe it has an answer.